Okay guys, so moving on from the modeling that we did, uh, we're now going to start looking at textures. Um, so this method of applying textures and things can, can apply to any model, but we're going to be continuing on with the models that we created in the last couple of videos. So, okay, this is our reference image. Um, and we've got a couple of textures here. We've got kind of a wooden texture for the, the doors and window frames, things like that. Uh, and then we've got a material for the walls which is kind of a sandstone-y type material there. Um, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, we've got our model here that you can see. Um, I am going to go to this website called Ambient CG. There's lots of places online that you can get textures from. Um, this is just one that I sort of suggest. It's kind of the one that I always go to first. And then if I can't find it here, then I'll start looking elsewhere. But um, this is a good one to start with. It's got hundreds of materials on, well, thousands if you look at this one. So generally you can find some pretty good ones and they're good quality and it's all free and everything like that. So what I'm gonna do is um, I'm going to go to this assets tab here and you can see it's categorized everything for me, which is quite useful. Um, and I'm gonna search for uh, sand. A lot of these are going to be for like, you know, literally sand. So you, you can kind of just scan through. Um, I'm not going to spend ages and ages. I think I picked some out earlier on that might be good. So I think this one's probably around about the closest thing I can get at the moment. Notice that the color is obviously off. We can change that. Um, but in terms of material, this will be fine. <laughs> you want, if you want to, you know, if you've got something else that you want to be really specific and you want to search online for something, you know, more to what you want, then that's fine. Uh, this is more about the process. So here I've got some options of what I want to download. So I don't want to look at this side with the PNGs. I would only go and look at downloading a PNG for your material if you have transparency. Um, you know, if it's like a wired fence or something where you need to actually see through parts of it, then you need it to be PNG. Otherwise, stick with JPEG. You get, uh, as you can see, a smaller file size. Uh, which is going to be better just for general optimization. So we also don't need to go above anything uh, anything above 2K for the size of the image because it's kind of just unnecessary. This is mainly going to be something for a game as well. So really we want to keep the file sizes of textures as low as you can, again, just for optimization. So I'm going to go for 2K JPEG. And I'm going to go to my downloads. Um, and yeah, he can, I've kind of doubled up here because I downloaded the same one earlier on. So when you download a material from here anyway, it will download it as a zipped folder. So you can't use, you can double click and look in it, but you can't use those things whilst it's still zipped. We need to unzip it. So I'm just going to right click it, extract all, and just hit extract. Um, let's close that back down. You can see it's now created a folder that isn't zipped, um, and I can use these files here. Uh, in 3ds max so notice that i've got a bunch of things like it's not just one uh, texture that you get you get a whole bunch of them that will make more sense as to what they're for when we start looking at the material editor in the 3ds max so we have a material we have our you know textures that we're going to use uh, we just need to create it now so let's go over to 3ds max um, what i'm going to do is push m on my keyboard that's m from other and it's the shortcut to the material editor. All right, if you don't want to do the shortcut, then if you go up here, that icon there with kind of the checkerboard thing going on, that is the material editor. Okay, this next part is kind of a bit, bit awkward. Um, there is a material that I always recommend for people starting out with doing texturing, and it's just called the standard material, um, but it's not available here as an option by default. Kind of annoyingly, 3ds Max kind of didn't, well, they, they changed the default render engine and the standard material isn't part of that render engine, so it's not there by default. So what we're going to do, um, and I would always suggest this when you're first starting out, rather than going on to any of these more advanced materials. So we're going to go up to here to rendering and just change the render setup. And here's the render engine. At the moment, we're using this one called Arnold. Um, we're going to change it to this one called Scanline. Always used to be the default one, this one, um, but in recent years it changed to Arnold. So 
you can then, once you've changed to scan line, so you've got a scan line tab here and there is a standard material. That's the one that we want to use um, and it's really good for learning about how to put materials together um, before you move on to anything else. So I'm going to drag that in, zoom in with the mouse wheel and you can click on the mouse wheel to pan around and zoom in within this sort of space in the material editor. So this is a material and it's made up of lots of images essentially. So if we go back to our images that we downloaded, we can see that we've got first of all this one that's called color. All right, we've got another one called displacement. Notice that that matches up with displacement here. We've got one which is called a normal map, or there's two normal maps. Um, this varies depending on the software that you're using, but for 3ds Max it refers to it as bump. Okay, it might be called normal or it might be called bump. Um, and you've got this one called roughness, um, which again doesn't really have an option with this particular software, but we can fit it in somewhere, or, or you don't have to make use of it. And then these other things are, are not of use to us right now. So color, so we're going to drag this over just into an empty space in the material editor. Okay, and then we want to hook this up to the diffuse color. Don't worry about the ambient color for now, just diffuse color. And that one is going to be the overall like, color that you would see of the material. Other than that, I think really the only one we want to worry about, don't worry about displacement uh, at the moment. If you try to use it, it's probably going to make things look bad. So don't use it for now until you know what you're doing. And the other one is normal map. So um, this DX means direct X and this one means um, open GL. So OpenGL is going to be most reliable. It doesn't, to be honest, I don't think there's really any difference here. So I'm just going to pick the GL one and I'm going to plug that into Bump. Okay, right now that's all you're going to need. So I've got my material. Now I need to apply it to my object. Firstly, if you're using clay like I was before, change the clay back to default shading. Or well, you may already be on default shading. That's fine if you are. And I'm also going to turn off this high quality for now, turn it back to standard. There we go. So if I click on the object of the walls, the object that you want to apply, uh, assign your material to, click on the material, and then come up here, you can see this one here. If you click that, that little icon, it will apply that material to your selection. Okay, so we've applied our material, so I'm going to close down the editor and have a look. You'll notice, unless you've got a, a, a really just basic primitive shape that you haven't really done much to, uh, the material has gone mental. Basically, it's all going that way up there, and it's going diagonally over here. Um, it's going all funny over here. That's normal. Um, that happens at first. We need to apply something to this to sort of flatten it all out. So I'm going to come up over this side to the Modify tab, and I'm going to look here in the Modifier list. Before you click the modify list, this part's important. If you're in here editing, I'll say I'm in the polygon mode and I've got this polygon selected uh, and I apply a modifier, it's going to apply that modifier just to the selection. So in this instance, we want the modifier to apply to the whole object. So I'm going to click editable poly first, right at the top level. Then I'm going to go to my modifier list. And the one that you want is called UVW map. Okay, so select that, and it's applied this modifier to our model. Okay, at first you're thinking this is worse than it was before. It looks horrible. Again, that's normal. You've got to assign the type of mapping that you would like, and this generally is going to be based on the primitive sort of shape of, of the object, generally speaking. So this one is box-like, I would suggest. So I'm going to select box. Now. We can look at our material more closely and we can see that it's uh, it's looking good. We've got a material assigned to there and that's absolutely fine. Okay, great. So now if I wanted to kind of tweak this, um, what I would do is just come over to this tiling over here. So um, the tiling is at one by default for everything, but if I start cranking these up, see how it kind of tiles it more time so it's uh, 
and repeated more times. And then we can go this way as well. So if you need, it's particularly this is if you've got like a brick wall or something and the bricks aren't like to, to scale to, to the model, if you see what I mean, then you need to use this tiling feature. It's not such an issue with this texture, but again, if you want to tweak something in terms of how that texture fits to the model, then you can just use these nice and easy. Great. Um, next up, so let's look at our reference image. Uh, we can do the process again for this wood. So I'm going to go back to um, this website, Ambient CG. Uh, I can just go to the wood category. One sort of downside, I suppose, to this particular site is that everything is very clean <laughs> most of the time. So it's quite hard to find things that are a bit more kind of battered. I think I chose this one, which is a kind of basic kind of wood material. Same process, download the 2K JPEG. If I go to my downloads folder, you can see I've already got that one. Okay. Wood 35, same process. Right click, extract it. Okay, so you can see now I've got an extracted version. Come to my material editor, so push M on the keyboard. And now I can drag in another one of these standard materials. So, however many materials you need in your scene, just keep dragging these standard ones in. And then drag in the um, textures. So, there's the color one. And there's the bump normal map. Plug those in. We'll look at the bump map in a bit more detail in a second. Okay, so then I'm just going to come to, let's say, my door, for example, select my material, click assign selection, ladder, assign selection, this window, assign selection, these guys, assign selection. That'll do for now. You get the point. So again, they're going to have the issue where if I zoom in on this, uh, a lot of the texturing is going crazy. So what we need to do for each model is select it, add our UVW map, and change it to box. These are all going to be box. Same thing here. Box. Same for the ladder. And same for these. Just again, make sure you've always got the top level selected. You're not in one of these editing modes when you apply the modifier. Okay. UVW map box. Cool. I know um, if we go to our reference image that the material for like the glass, if you like, is something a bit different. But, um, you know, if you want to assign another different material on this, you, exactly the same process. Great. So that all looks good. Uh, that's fine. And yeah, you would assign it to everything else as well and assign all your materials in the same way. So what I just want to look at though first is, where's our reference image gone? I just might have just closed it down. There we go. So in this instance, the actual coloring of that material, that texture is, is a lot more sort of red than the one that I've got. So if I wanted to make it kind of a more of a match, then this isn't really going to work too well. So what I want to do is use Photoshop to kind of make a, an edit to the texture. So you might not have Photoshop, um, but you can go online and use something like Photop, an online editor, which can do the same thing. So I'm going to open the uh, Around like the wall texture that I that I uh, downloaded, so that one. And when you if you want to edit the uh, materials, you always edit the color version because that's the one that you're really going to see. Okay, so in this instance, all I can do nice and quickly is just unlock that layer. Let's go to image adjustments, go to color balance, and I literally just want to put a bit more magenta and a bit more red in there. So trying to match that color a bit more. You can see that now. I think that'll do. Push OK, and then what I can do is go File, Export as. Uh, make sure it's a JPEG. That's fine. Export. And what I can do is just overwrite. So if I go to Ground 57 again and overwrite this one, do I want to replace it? Yes, I do. And then you can see it's it's immediately 
used that material and replaced it with this new one. Okay, so it's a bit of a closer color match. So on that note, if I go to the material editor, when you have your materials here, these guys that are plugged in, you can see that it has remembered the path to that material. Okay, so if I were to, because mine's in my downloads, okay, where I added it from, if I was then to delete this folder, 3ds Max would no longer know where that material is and I would lose the material on my model. Okay, so it's best practice to make sure that you are adding your materials from a, a location where it's not going to move and then you're not going to mess up your model. Okay, or your textures, I should say. Great. So one last thing I'll just show you because you might want to look at your model looking a bit nicer <laughs> with a bit of lighting. So I can really quickly show you how to add some lights. So if I go to the Create tab, go to Lights, I'm just going to change to Standard. Just want the basic ones. Just add a skylight. Click to add it in. Move that up in the air, just above your model. Go to Modify, Turn Cast Shadows on. And then if we add this Omni light here, okay, chuck that up in the air. Um, what this skylight will do is just give you some basic kind of shadows to make it look rounded. And then this Omni light can act as the sun. So to see the effect of these, we're going to get our high quality back on. Wait for it to kind of work things out. And if I start moving this guy around, you can see that the shadows are moving. Okay. So you can just kind of position that to where you want the sun position to be. Something like that will be fine. Okay. And then you can start to see uh, the effect of your materials with some lighting on it as well. So you can do that as much as you want to. Okay, so that's just some basics of adding materials with the material editor. So we've used these standard materials. Uh, before I go, actually, let me just show you the effect of this normal map. So if I go to my material for the walls, uh, this normal maps might not be the best example because it's not very shaded, but you see that it's obviously just completely flat. If I click on my material, go to maps down here, I see the level, the level of bump is at 30. If I change this to an extreme value like 300, see the surface of the, the model now, how it looks like it's almost got some depth to it. That's the effect of the, uh, the normal map or the bump map. So I zoom out a bit. You can see the effect of that. It looks a lot more um, like it's got depth to it. Okay, now actually that quite looks quite good. Normally, like 300 is way too much. <laughs> Let's turn it down to like 200. Yeah, maybe something like 200 is probably fine. Okay, and then you get a quite a nice effect building up there. Okay, and that's how you can use those normal maps to give it like some dimension without actually doing any extra 3D modeling. Brilliant. So uh, if you go through that process and obviously apply the materials to the whole of the model or all of the models that you've got in your scene, if you're following this project um, as, a, as a way of practicing the, the process of adding and, and editing those materials and obviously find yourself a new material for that uh, sort of panel in there, unless you want it to stay wooden, of course. All right. But uh, yeah, that's the texturing process, the basics of it anyway. And that's all for now.